What you see on the track today or on the rally stage, it's wildly different to the machinery that was being used five, 10, 20 years ago. The technology that's embodied in those engines has changed. The car has been finessed, developing them to the nth degree. But what we're trying to find out is last frontier, which is about mental performance, the brain of the driver. What can we learn about that? How can we improve the performance of our drivers through mental training techniques? We really firmly believe that there is an opportunity to affect that sort of final area of performance for the driver. So what is this project about? It's basically about building a helmet that has EG sensors involved that allow us to understand what's happening in the brain of a driver so that we can give them feedback on their own performance and help them optimize it. The brain is extremely complicated to study. It's uh, billions of neurons, billions of synapses. For me as a neuroscientist, this is an extremely exciting opportunity. I'm Gus Greensmith, uh, 24 years old, and I'm a WRC driver for the M Sport Ford World Rally Team. I'm Adrian Formo, 26 years old. I'm a professional rally driver for M Sport Ford Rally Team. When I was first approached and they said, this is the idea behind it, I was like, sign me up. We're always looking for an edge over our rivals, over our teammates, and this is such an exciting project because it could give a driver the biggest benefit. This morning what we'll be doing is setting up the, the whole system and we'll be streaming live data from your brain, from a car, on the track while you're driving. The first time I would do this type of thing, I wanted to be in this project because I was in medicine before. It's interesting to know that somebody will be reading inside your mind and your brain. You don't have the opportunity to measure brain signals from elite athletes very often, so it's a unique opportunity. No, it sounds great to us, we're really looking forward to it. The helmet. We basically had to develop an entirely new type of electrode that could go into the helmet and, of course, make electrical contact to get the brain signals. So there's this microcontroller, which you can think of as basically a really tiny computer that takes all the information from the sensors and then sends it wirelessly to a computer. The other thing we've done is we've tied it to the GPS data. So that means as the race car driver goes around the track, we're able to see in real time their brain signals as well as where they are on the track. The helmet and the system and the GPS and everything we have right now is still really very much in the prototype stages. This is really the proof of concept. It's a very exciting moment. It's a culmination of years of work. It is a huge challenge. Normally, these experiments take place in very, very controlled environments, and I think it's an amazing feat of engineering being able to measure brain signals while a driver is in a car. see his brain on the screen going up and down, so it's perfect. So what we're seeing is everything seems to be working. We seem to be streaming the EEG data. For me as a neuroscientist, it's a dream come true to be able to get this type of data while someone is driving in a car that fast. Actually watching this and seeing them perform was stunning. They're incredible athletes and they're, and they're really aware of their performance. And the thing that's fascinating is that we could see that in some of the brain data. Ooh, he's within, he's within four tenths at the moment. Wouldn't be a day at a racetrack without a bit of healthy competition. 
as your teammate, it's the first person you have to beat. So, of course, there's competition between anything that we do. I hate losing. Look at them brakes now. Uh, it's, it's impossible. <laughs> it's just losing all the way through now. When we drive together, we are always competing, but uh, it's always fair play. And, uh, and I'm sure we'll have some fun. Hey, if you want, I can do the next session. <laughs> no. Our biggest ambition in this project would be to get the drivers to understand the potential of their own brain and their signals. If they understand and they kind of get a sense of how this could play in their training, then we will have succeeded and created dialogue with them and helped them discover new ways of becoming super performers. The flow for a driver is when everything becomes completely fluid and subconscious to the point where we're not thinking, we're just driving. A lot of the time you can't even remember what you've done in the stage because it's almost like an out-of-body experience, whereas you, you just completely, one with the car, just everything is fluid. Flow is a mental state that we all have experienced, but we don't really know what is the brain signal of that mental state. And the hope with this experiment is that we can figure out what is this brain signal of this very important for performance mental state. There were moments where I, and it happens very rare with scientists and data, that I felt goosebumps. The excitement kind of overwhelmed me. So now what we're going to do, we'll ask you to use your brain to drive a car. The car will, will move from the left and the right, and what we're asking you to do is, is try to keep it stable. And in terms of being able to control this alpha, what it should do is translate to some impact on your actual performance later. We will be applying a neurofeedback protocol, which basically means that the person is watching a game that we've created that is run based on the signals that are coming from their brain. And you'll get a score so you can actually compete, <laughs> which I know you, you enjoy. From the research that we've done so far, we have found that we can measure a specific signal called alpha. We found that lower alpha is associated with higher speeds and better performance. This is what we're interested in investigating. This gives you a very obvious and explicit and conscious feel of where you're supposed to be mentally in order to perform your best. The drivers are trying to find a competitive advantage in everything. So when we talk to them, they use techniques like breathing or meditation. These are proxies to get themselves in a mental state, potentially of low alpha. So if we know what the brain signals of flow look like, then we can create methods and techniques that trainers or everyday people can use into getting into that mental state faster and sustain it for longer. That's crazy. You, you basically beat the high score that every one of us have had in the first <laughs> trial. <laughs> None of us have ever managed to get above 350. I will not say what I've done because Gus is there. <laughs> I was quite impressed by the fact we can't control our brain. And it was taking so much energy in my brain. I was like, oh, I have to stop. I try to do something I'm doing during my preparation. And it was to just touch my hands. And normally it activated me a bit. And it was working. And then I succeed just to control it and be perfectly on the light for the last minute. Sometimes we're not in the right mindset driving through a stage and we're conscious of it, which is not ideal. We want this to be as close to subconscious as it, as it can possibly be. The problem with driving a stage conscious, thinking about the fact that you don't feel quite right is that you're making small mistakes everywhere. You're losing time here and there. So to put yourself in the right mind frame is one of the toughest things a driver has to do because you can't give up stages, you can't give up time. Everything's so precious in this sport, the tenths that we fight for. Wow. <laughs> you have the official highest score. So did you did you use your technique only in the... Only at the last part of only... the last one. Oh, I see, I see. Ah, okay. 
So I've seen that that's the fascinating part that you, you're both using techniques that you're using for your preparation. Yeah. And you now see why they, they, they work. So if you learn to improve on the neurofeedback game without using any of your preparation techniques, just by trying to internally self-regulate, potentially that's the most effective way of using this training tool in your training. I would bet anything on the fact that 10 years from now, or even five years from now, you will have live streams of data that is relevant to the brain of the driver. It's inevitable. They'll transform what it means to be an athlete. We have so many data points for the car. There's very few things that we don't record, and there's very few things that we can't see. The one bit of data that we can't see is exactly how well is the driver performing and is he in his optimal band. So that's just as important as the car. So there's two things that we learned. First is that if done properly by the driver trying to self-regulate their neural signals, it can actually show that they can improve their performance while driving. So it was pretty good for me. I was more consistent on this one than the previous one. They analyzed the data. The data showed that I was much more focused on the good range for performance for the second session than the first one. The fact that we can find even the slightest improvement, it's, it's absolutely astonishing. The other thing that we found in terms of neurofeedback is that it can be used as a tool for them to gauge whether different things that they might use in their mental preparation before a race could be successful or not. I had some expectation, but it was much more interesting than uh, that I thought. If we continue to work together, then maybe we can find something to improve my brain. The whole experience has been, uh, been really useful. It's something I really want to take forward and making myself as freely available to them as possible because I think it's something that can make a big difference. It's really, really exciting, the potential of this technology. The fact that a driver who's already at the edge of human performance, of what someone can do mentally and physically, showed signs of improvement, that by itself is a huge success. Do you think anyone won? If the goal was to improve your brain, then I did. <laughs> so, so should we say it's a tie? <laughs>